So I wanted to do today uh, some griddle pizza. And it's similar, the, the technique that I use when I griddle pizza is very similar to a grilled pizza. Um, you usually have to cook both sides before you start actually making the pizza. So uh, if you've ever seen somebody grill a pizza, they usually oil the pizza dough up, they lay it down on the grill, they get, the, they get it cooked on one side, flip it, turn the temp down, and then they, they put the, uh, the toppings on. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, the beauty of this is that I have the, uh, the griddle cover and I can open that all the way up and I can let uh, you know all the steam out. It's going to keep everything crispy and uh, it's still going to melt the cheese and cut through that convection. So what I'm going to do right now, I already set the grill up and I've got it going at, uh, at medium high heat. And I'm just going to put some oil on the grill. Um, I have a couple of pizza doughs that I started to stretch out, but they're not all the way done. So I'm just going to uh, stretch these by hand. They're a little oblong sized doughs. Um, but you can do it however you want. I, I actually rolled these a little bit oblong because I wanted to fit two on this griddle instead of two round ones. So they're almost going to be more like a, like a flatbread. And if you're stretching it out, you can use your fingertips to kind of get it really nice and thin. If you have like a, a little hole, you just pinch that closed. So I'm going to lay that on there. Don't be afraid. If it's a little rips or tears in there, you can just tell people it's rustic. They don't know. See, this is the way I saw it when I was in Italy. They don't know. Rustic. That's what I always tell people. Nothing wrong with rustic. Everybody likes rustic. Or artisanal. That's another great one, too. You can say, hey, this is artisanal. Artisanal flatbread pizza. That's why it looks the way that it looks. But... So I'm going to get this going, let it crisp up, I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit higher, get on to like a medium high heat, let it get the crust on the bottom going, uh, and then I'll flip it and then uh, put all the stuff on. So I'm just going to let this sit for a couple minutes. You can usually tell it'll start to puff up and you'll start to see the, uh, the edges will start to brown a little bit. Um, and if you have some thinner spots, you'll be able to kind of see through those, but it's going to be nice and crispy that way too, because you hit both sides of it. I'm just starting to crisp up a little bit on the bottom. I'm actually going to move it. And then what I'm going to do is I'll flip this now. And then what I'll do is I'll come back, flip it one more time. But first I want to let it get it. A little bit crispy on the bottom side. I want to make sure both sides have enough crispiness to them. I want it to snap when I cut it. So I'm going to open that up all the way. I'm going to let this sit for about another five minutes. Flip it again, and then we'll uh, we'll put the sauce and the cheese and the and the pepperoni on. All right, so I can see the steam coming out of here. We're probably doing pretty well. Nice bubble. Um, all right, let's see, I'm gonna flip. All right, that looks good. So that other side, this side, the face side, is a little bit crustier than this side, but I have a little bit of crispiness on this, which is good. Uh, depends on what you like. If you like it, it'll be a little doughy. If you like it to be a little crustier. Um, I'm keeping this on high heat the whole time. Just going to drop some sauce on. I like it to be, as I said, artisanal. So I'm not going to go crazy. I want the sauce to be all the way to the edges. But, I mean, rustic, you know. doesn't have to be perfect. I don't like a ton of, I like the sauce to be just coated on the pizza. I don't want it to be too wet, too heavy. It's only going to, if you're going to do it that way, it's just going to, everything's going to um, sag, you know. So I've got a nice little, also when you cut into it, you don't want all the cheese to fall off because there's too much sauce on there. So. 
one of these, I'll do pepperoni. Look at that down. So I'm going to turn this down to medium high because I want the cheese to melt. I don't want the pizza to be done before the cheese melts. And I can already hear it and feel that heat coming off there. This one, margarita, fresh basil in there, whatever herbs you have in the garden, put them out, throw them on there, delicious. A little bit of Parmesan, it's going to kick up the salt factor, it's more about flavor than actually melting. And then mozzarella, if you like cheddar, use cheddar. I mean there's no, there's no, there's no rule as to what you have to do or what you have to use. If you like thicker cut cheese, use thicker cut cheese. If you want to grind your own cheese up and do that. Um, provolone is usually like really got a great pull to it if you're looking for a different cheese than the traditional mozzarella. But I think we're looking pretty good right here. All right, so that's rocking and rolling. I'm going to turn that down. Let the cheese melt. Okay, so take a look back at this now, see how we're doing. Oh yeah, that's all right. It's getting nice and, nice and crispy on the bottom. I want this cheese to melt a little bit more, so it's looking pretty good, but I want to get a, a better melt on that cheese, so I'm gonna let that go. So I think we're looking pretty good there. The cheese is bubbling. Crunch. 